All right, I can't find a video on this and it's been driving me bananas. And after seeing some horrendous guidance online, I decided to do my own video on this. And I just wanna show that you're not crazy if you're going through the same thing I am going through. You'll notice that I am connected on a wired LAN. You'll notice I'm signed into the PlayStation Network, all those wonderful things. And if I go to my, uh, set up my internet connection, right? and I go to advanced. I also want to show you that I am in fact using the updated DNS and secondary DNS settings, uh, which is Cloudflare right now. There are other ones you could use, but I want to show that I'm using those. So I've set everything up properly. I just want to be very clear on that. And we're going to go ahead and do a quick test of my network speed and you're gonna see some crazy things. Now, while it's running through everything, I want you to know that I am running AT&T one gig to the house. Normally I get at the point that comes into the house about 990 down and about 990 up. I am running additional ethernet cable up to this room. I'm using a separate CAT6 cable, which is why my internet connection speed has dropped from a gig to about, it ranges, I'd say anywhere from about 575 to about 700, give or take with whatever PlayStation's network is doing or not doing at the time. Here you can see I'm getting 674 down and 9.9 .9 up. Now I am using gigabit fiber and you're probably thinking, oh, well, you've clearly configured something wrong. So still in one single shot while I am talking, I am not changing or like editing anything here. I'm still talking as I go through this and I want to link an account, which I'm gonna link my YouTube account. Not really gonna link my YouTube account. This is the only way I know how to get to the hidden browser that is built in within the uh, PlayStation 5 interface. So I can actually kind of cheat it and actually get to an actual browser here. So bear with me as I type with one hand, you can see bandwidth test is already configured because that's the only thing I've ever used this built-in browser for. I'm gonna very slowly hit down to search with my left hand and I'm gonna go ahead and use Ookla, which is what I use pretty much constantly. And there you can see everything. I will blur out my actual IP address here. So you're gonna see a blob, but I want you to see that I am actually in fact connected to the internet. And we're gonna go ahead and run this and see what we get. Well, here's our download speed again. Now, okay, you know, like I said, it ranges slightly. I'm seeing it kind of teeter up and down, maybe a little lower than normal, five, 600. I think when we did it from the official PlayStation thing, we were getting what, like 570? But the real kicker is the upload speed. And wait for it, and look at that. How fast is that upload speed? Well, it is pretty damn fast, which, it should be, because I'm paying an awful lot of money for this. Why does the PlayStation built-in test run an incredibly slow bandwidth speed when I don't want to sign up for anything? Why am I getting over 800 up yet when, let me back out of this all again, still in one seamless shot here, guys. This drives me nuts, by the way, because like I said, I've seen so many videos online of people saying, Oh, there's no reason your network speed should be like that. You've clearly configured something wrong. Well, tell me what the hell I configured wrong because look at this again. Let's watch it together and you tell me. So whenever you see somebody on any forum post, whether it be the official PlayStation forum post, whether it be on Tom's Hardware Guide, on Reddit, on Twitter, on Twitch, on YouTube, I don't care where, I want you to point them to this video and show them that I have configured it correctly, I am not crazy, and everything works exactly as it should, but for some reason, Sony's built-in connection upload speed test as part of the PlayStation 5 UI absolutely sucks.